Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit also about this rainbow Damascus texture thingy that I made. Um, cause I, I did some remapping. I wasn't a huge fan of how the original textures were turning out. Um, so let me just for funsies apply this to the, the main head just so we get... And you can laugh at the very not good UVs on some of this model. Um, alright, so let's take a look at this. Kind of fun, interesting, I don't know. I, I like Damascus Steel, I think it's really cool. Anyway. So here's the head that we have. Um, again, very broken UVs. So let's take a look at how I actually got this texture, because I did decide to like largely scrap a lot of the textures that came directly out of textures.com. So I'm going to grab my Damascus material. I'm going to expand that, and we can take a look at exactly what I did here. Um, I probably should have saved a copy of the base shader, but I didn't. So anyway, all right. So this is what we have. Uh, you'll notice that the... The shader itself has maps for the color, the metalness, um, oops, uh, uh, ooh, I mapped the wrong thing there, but I guess that's kind of fine. Um, specular weight, I actually meant that to be roughness, but oh well. Uh, and there's also just another random um, little oval map on there. So what I did for this is I didn't use all of the textures that textures.com gave me because I found that some of them like weren't super showing up great and I wasn't like really in love with how it works. So. What I did is, let's see, ooh, yes, okay. All right, so I have the generic color texture that they gave me. Um, I found that to my liking it was a little bit dark, so I kind of upped the exposure on it. I don't necessarily recommend doing that, but like, meh. Um, normally, so if you're making these yourself, I would recommend just modifying the file for realsies uh, so that you don't need to like mess with the exposure and stuff like that. But for demo purposes, that's what I did. Uh, and then I actually pipe this into two separate ramp textures. Uh, so I have this one, which I have put into the metalness. So basically, uh, in real world objects, normally something is either metal or it's not. So you don't want a lot of like weird grayscale values in here. Um, just sort of off the bat, let's also take a look at this without the... All right, so this is like sort of the, the metal texture that we have here. Um, and again, if you, if you play with this, it's going to change how the overall shader sort of looks and how it works. Um, let's see here. Give me less stupid values? Okay, I don't think I need to refresh my render view. I have to do. Oop. Very helpful. Oh, I wasn't, my bad, I wasn't selecting the ramp shader. Always something. Um, all right, so depending on, again, how you slider these values is going to give you basically different, it's going to remap the colors from the original file uh, into the metalness channel. Um, so it's a really handy way if you're trying to be kind of lazy about it, you don't want to like edit a bunch of stuff in Photoshop that you can go in. And in this case, just to find a few like little slivers of areas to not be metallic. Um, again, maybe not super realistic for this material. Um, I was just kind of looking for a way to like really punch some of the difference in those in those uh, materials between each other. Um, I also did exactly the same thing with the uh, the roughness where I just have a different map going to that. I'm just trying to actually find roughness. Hang on, I always, I always lose roughness in here. It drives me crazy. Roughness, roughness, blah, 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 blah. Specular roughness, ha, ha, ha. All right, so I'm gonna grab either the R or the G or the B, doesn't super matter, pop it into specular roughness. And clearly I have made this map for a very different channel uh, because this doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so for this one, uh, like I said, we're looking at this, um, and this is giving some pretty insane looking results, uh, because like I said, I've designed this for a different channel. Um, if we turn, ah, that actually looks better, I think, than what I had originally. Anyway, um, but again, basically just remapping the values there, so we get some areas that are shinier and some areas that are not. And I think in this case, it probably makes sense to sort of switch the values of this because um, I don't like the shininess where it is. So I'm just going to kind of like uh, switch that. You also don't need to go like pure black and white. You can go, you know, more aggressive like grayscale values for that um, if you wanted a little bit more difference that way. Um, actually, I should probably take down. I think I want it less rough. So you can do some like really subtle grayscale mapping and stuff like that. That's probably terrible, but... That's basically all I did to sort of make that because I wasn't in love with the original textures. I just sort of threw it into ramp nodes so I got a little bit more control. I could basically remap that and sort of make custom maps uh, just based off of this one file texture. 
That's actually how I used to do a lot of texturing um, back when I was in college, and it was very convenient, quick, easy way to do stuff. Um, kind of weird if, you know, something gets corrupted with this file, if you don't have these file textures just sort of around to plug into wherever, but it's good for, like, sort of quick one-off stuff or just, like, testing, uh, testing different values like this, so, yeah.